What's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of Respect the Game Podcast. My name is Edward, named after a trilogy, that being my pops. Shout out to my mother and my grandmother for helping raise me too. Please start what you're doing. Go follow at Emac Stats for all your up-to-date high school, pro, and collegiate sports coverage. We'll not disappoint. We'll keep you up to date on all that's going on in the beautiful sports world. We are at full strength. Everybody's birthdays have passed this month. Shout out to all the August babies born in the month of August. We are at full strength again. And what is a podcast without your brethren? Come on, man. Big brother Iron Man once again tapping in. You know, Instagram, Twitter, charismatic, you know, street savvy at its finest. Let's go. Yo, it is the host with the most that blows the most smoke, Black Peace, the rap plugs, the hip-hop plugs. You already know. Be sure to go check out Talking Smoke on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you get your Joe podcast from. Be sure to go check your boy out, man, and social media. Let's go. Good evening, beautiful people. It is I, the one and only, Sadesh Xavier Miles. And on behalf of me and my brothers, I just want to say thank you so much for still continuing to rock with us, support us. You can go follow me at Respect the Game Podcast. Twitter, I'm sorry, that was Instagram, Twitter at Sedacious, and take it away, bro. Oh, uh, yeah, man, getting straight to it. Out of Ace Town, there was disturbing video footage put out on Twitter last night, this evening, this morning, of Houston's very own Mo City Don, zero the crew out of Mo City, Mo City Don being folded up as he was getting punched and kicked on uh, by a member of Trader Truth's camp. Jayton. Jayton. The camera on social media is a very dangerous place, right? The, so if you haven't heard heard the footage, it's a lot. I may cut it up, I may not, but very, very much so paraphrasing. From seeing that video of Zero being folded down in a, in a fetal-like position uh, outside of whatever club or venue they was at being punched and kicked on by j that is when the camera actually cut on. So let Zero tell his side of the story. He was having a conversation. He said, somebody said, hey, once you finish handling whatever business you're doing, outside or whatever, come take a walk with me. I'm under the assumption, but I'm not confirming nor denying that the person he was referencing to was Trader Truth. So allegedly, Trader Truth says, hey, when you finish handling whatever you're handling outside, you know, come take a walk with me. Zero proceeds to take a walk with Trader Truth. And as they're walking outside, whatever venue they're at, Zero explains it as out of nowhere before he knows it, he, you know, gets stowed on. And from that standpoint, he feels a multitude of fists and feet stomping him and kicking him, stomping him out. And the reason, and his first reaction is like, all right, I don't know what this is, what this is about. I know I'm getting jumped. So I'm going to just fold up, protect myself as much as I can. So I ain't really, you know, looking like, looking like I didn't got just completely assault and battered by the face. And he explained that towards the end of the situation is when a phone gets taken out, it's then being recorded. And he says, if you listen closely, you can hear someone in the background saying, all right, all right, y'all jumped on that. Let him get his foul one. Let him get his foul one. So basically paraphrasing and summing up, that is the side of zero in terms of the video that's out there currently of him being punched and kicked on by j which at the naked eye, when the video picks up at that standpoint, it looks like, yo, this must have been a one-on-one and like zero got dropped. Like what's going on here, right? But that wasn't the case as uh, as the story is told by zero. There hasn't been any mentioning of the story from Trader Truth's side or j side. And that is the most relevant piece of information we have on this incident uh darnell gonna take it to you when you seen that footage what was your first reaction um like a uh, shock value style i want to say what's going on trade not trade um like zero like what the hell is going on period like you seeing one of the most respected guys from houston not just in houston but just from houston you know all across the you know united states that you know that mess with him and I've seen him basically, you know, in this cowardice, you know, position. But, you know, just take a second to actually, like, watch the video and actually pay attention to what's going on. 
you can see them actually getting up and, you know, ready to fight. So from those, you know, those certain movements, I'm like, anybody that's, you know, folding up or like, you know, submitting, you know, submitting to the situation or just feeling like they punking out, they're not going to get up and ready to fight. They just going to cower away. So I, I feel like to a certain extent, his story does carry a lot of weight. I feel like he's being very truthful to a certain extent. I mean, I, you know, I wasn't there. You know, nobody was there. But the way it sounds, it sounds like the typical, you know, he had beef with him. He decided to deal with it that way. You know, people took their necessary steps, you know. People going to make fun of him, you know, because they're going to think like, oh, this will happen when you one deep or just, you know, riding solo, this is what happens. But at the end of the day, bro, like, you couldn't That's help yourself. You, you, got, you, got, uh -huh. you, you couldn't help yourself, could you? Well, it's the situation. It's just, I mean, he's known for being one deep, and literally he got a jump being one deep. You know, yeah. like it, it, it's it's a it's it's just one of those, you know, funny things that the internet's gonna have that way with. Me personally, I don't look at it that way. I mean, like he got the situation, and sometimes this shit stuff gets bad. So, you know, he did the best thing to do to protect his image, in my opinion. Somebody look at, oh, you punked out. You should have just still tried to fight. Like, you getting, in his opinion, you're getting jumped. You got to think smart, not dumb. Um, I think what, 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 what struck me, bro, <laughs> and this is why I feel the way that I feel, what struck me, bro, is that there's an officer that kind of phases in to that video who, who was seeing that this man was being assaulted, right? Like, You you hold the zero back. You why are you trying to hold zero back? Why why not be like, hey, I saw that. Like, could have been private security. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know. You know, that's that's is that not obstruction of justice at that point? And it's it's, it's all on it's all on video and everything. You know, what I'm saying badge, shield, and everything. But that's just, I guess it could be my bias. I don't, I don't get it. Private security show up in all black, my name. I don't know where your uniform type shit, but police, yeah. We have plenty of parties where police show up in their uniform. I get it. But yeah, it is what it is, bro. It is what it is. And zero in trade in heaven. Huh? I was going to just say, man, zero in trade. It's been a long time coming. They've been. Everybody in Houston know that this beef was, or this situation was probably inevitable, uh, you know, from happening. Um, they've been having disagreements for quite some time now. I don't know if that's the first time that they've seen each other um, in person within some years, but um, aside from the jumping piece of it, I don't know what that was about, but, you know, uh, I know Trey and Zero have, you know, they're cousins, they're actually family, so I don't think which is why I think uh, the police officers let it happen, right? Because they know the history of it. And rather than, you know, seeing two legends potentially die, like people, you know, pull out guns and take it to the utmost, you know, man, let them, you know, let them get this off their chest. It's been, like I said, a long time coming. So um, it's a shame that, you know, social media get to run with a clip and it wasn't the full thing from start to finish, but, you know, it's the, kind of the world we living in, you know, back in the grip, it used to be, you know, whoever wins the war, you know, they get the right history. But nowadays, sometimes it's more so whoever pull their camera at first, you know, kind of gets the right, the first bit of history or, you know, the first piece that people get to see anyway. And a lot of times people don't go back and second and triple check and, you know, make sure it's accurate. You know, they just run off with it, you know, such is life. So, uh, Knowing, knowing the image Trader Truth has been able to show unto not just Houston, but the world just in terms of his great deeds and helping people all across the world, basically, are we to expect a statement or an explanation from him about, about this video? Or I'm, so, I'm sorry, my bad, not to cut you off. But I'm so glad that you asked this. And I want to say a whole bunch of curse words. Hell, mm, F, no. I don't want to curse, but no. No, he should Not at all. Not at all. One, he's done too much. Two, he's still 
yeah, he still tried the truth. So, no, this is what you get when you when you mess with an asshole by nature. Stop playing with us. But I feel like he should answer through his art. Us, you you clicked up, nigga. You you riddle. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just saying, like Houston, it's like just let. I ain't just ABN, let, bro. I, I, let I mean, I do that thing. I think that's smell what you're saying, though. Stay out of it. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. Trade the truth don't have to issue no apologies and no none of that. That's that's crazy, bro. He's still in the streets for real, like. And like not just in the streets, like in the communities. <laughs> What's up? I feel like he should answer like to a certain extent in his music. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he should kind of like say, like, I'm this kind of man, whatever, but I still got my business. I gotta handle my way that I feel like I need to handle it. That's how we I feel don't, like. any explanation we don't he does, really, that's what you should do. We don't really know Trader True from new music drops anymore, man. It's more so the philanthropic work as of lately, you know. Um, but that's I, I know I'm not checking for no too. and and in no disrespect though. I'm not checking for a new Trader Truth album. Now, I like Trader Truth as an artist. I love his old, you know, his old body of work. But everybody know, like, if your name ain't Jay-Z, you know, rapping is a, a young nigga sport, you know. Um, it's, it's a few timeless people that we still have within the culture that can drop in, you know. Remo- uh, for the most part, everybody would be receptive of it. But that's a that's a very, very short list. But hey, man, you know, what do I know? Yeah. <clears throat> moving on, uh, moving on. Last since the last time we shot the pod, I don't, I, don't, I'm, I'm, I know this happened last week. I don't know if it happened right after we had gotten done shooting. But latest news in La La Land, the Lake Show in Lakerland, you have Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly has been traded to the. Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, we know the beef, we know the history that lies within Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook. Stacious, you're a diehard Laker fan. So I know you, a la LeBron, uh, Lebanon, James, as you like to call them. I'll start with Isaac. Does this move? With the Lakers acquiring Patrick Beverly, how much do you feel like it moves the needle in terms of championship potential for the Lakers, considering how last year went? Well, if and that's particular, it's particularly um, essential that part that you mentioned compared uh, back to last year, right? Because last year, like a team was abysmal on defense; um, they couldn't. You know, they couldn't do too much of shit, really, uh, in regards to generating turnovers and putting pressure and defending the rim. Um, a lot of that had to do with injuries. And then a lot of that was just, hey, we just don't have the pieces to play good, you know, good, gritty defense. Um, but now, um, being that the old mantra is, you know, defense wins championships, um, I think it's more so uh, an upgrade. I think Patrick Beverly will bring all-out intensity. Uh, they called a man missing 94 feet. Um, they were lacking um, perimeter defense at the guard position, especially when they let Caruso walk in free agency to the Bulls. Um, that, that was that was definitely missed. So I think he will bring a level of competitiveness and intensity on that side of the ball that was so desperately needed. And I think it will be contagious. And I think he'll hold people accountable out there on that side of the ball. So uh, in that regard, I think it's a really good move. Um, if Rob Palenka can somehow magically couple that with Miles Turner and Buddy Hill, I may be able to sleep a little better at night, potentially. But I overall, I think it was a decent move. I think it was a good move. Uh, before y'all share y'all thoughts, uh, Pat Bev was traded, or well, he Straight from the Wolves to the Jazz, obviously the offseason. Jazz obviously is blowing up that team. Pat, what the Lakers had to give up in exchange to receive Patrick Beverly was giving up a uh, Taylor Horton Tucker as well as Stanley Johnson. So, uh, so yeah, for the viewers out there who may just think uh, they just landed Pat Bell without having to give up anything. 
<laughs> that's not the case. They traded Taylor Hoyt and Tucker and Stanley Johnson in exchange for Pat Bell. So Dacious, you're a diehard Lakers fan. How does Pat Bev now being on this team make you feel as a Lakers fan? Oh, honestly, bro, I have to say that Izzo put it so well that I couldn't have said it no better myself. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. That's 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 the way to shine hard. Like, bro, I, I have nothing to say. He really nailed every point because really what I wanted to come across with was I feel like his defensive intensity is going to be something that's woven into the DNA of the team. And so that's why I feel like it's a good pickup because he's forever going to be feisty. Let's let's have him be feisty and get LeBron the ball and go win a championship and, along with pieces around him. And ironically enough, He's a career 37% three-point shooter. He goes on to the Lakers as the Lakers' best three-point shooting option right now as it currently stands with the roster the way it's constructed now. Wow. Um, but, hey, as a Lakers fan, that's, that's the times we're living in, man. So, you know, they say it always get worse for it, get a little better. Hopefully, we we pass the worst part and yeah. we on to the better segment, but. Mm. Who is the most important piece? As of right now, it's not the trade deadline. Other moves may be made. Maybe a fair consensus or maybe an arguable consensus is that, hey, Westbrook just isn't tradable at the moment considering what his contract is and considering how, how he's been playing or how it may appear that he may not gel well with other superstars. Who is the most important piece to the Lakers winning a championship out of LeBron James? Well, that's 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 not a that's not a serious question. X and not LeBron. <laughs> Forgive me, audience. <laughs> include nah, include LeBron. Just go keep him in there. Cause it's still the person I'm finna name. <laughs> he the he the whole yeah. Le- LeBron and Anthony Davis. Oh, Anthony Davis has to be an MVP candidate this year in order for the Lakers to have any type of remote shot at <laughs> any type of competitive run in the playoffs. And and the reason the reason I asked that question because I'm listening to what y'all are saying about Patrick Beverly, and my mind can only go to like. What Pat Bev got going on means absolutely Nate thank you to me personally if AD not on the court and healthy and they're building that chemistry as a whole. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I mean, also too, I just watching what's going on in the media, people are to a degree, I feel like rather, people seem to think Westbrook is, isn't going to may get traded for, you know, like you say, the Buddy Hill deal. Miles Turner, he may get traded there, and that may, t- okay, you don't have to worry about that friction with Pat Bev and Westbrook or whatever the case may be. I think for, you, and you talk about Pat Bev's energy being contagious, I think Pat Bev's energy has been greatly appreciated and awarded on teams who hasn't won anything, right? Uh, You got the T-Wolves. They were a fairly young ball club. You had the Clippers before. Yeah, we we had the Clippers. Obviously, we know who Kawhi is. Um, And then you bring in him to – then you have the Rockets, who they were trying to come up, and he was able to, like, make a name for himself in that regard as they were all coming up together and Harden was transcending into – you know, who he, an MVP, but I don't know, I'm not doubting his impact or, or how how contagious the energy can be. I just don't know if, like, him being a rah-rah guy is necessarily needed with, like, the championship pedigree that the Lakers already have. Bubble or not, AD is a champion. Braun's been there, done that. Now, there can't be chemistry there because, for those who don't know, obviously, you had 
before we knew him on the Rockets, he came up undrafted playing with LeBron in training camp with the Heat and D-Wade. So there's chemistry there. But I don't know how much the Lakers need a rah-rah as opposed to skill, talent, 37% from three, knock down these threes as much as, okay, if AD is hurt, which is why having Kyrie was, was is such a like a sexy thought, because like, do what you want to do, AD. If we got Kyle over here, we can still get to the promised land. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I don't think mm, they can still get to the playoffs, but the promised land, if the promised land theoretically speaking is a championship, no chance without Anthony. Well, that's unfortunate for Lakers fans. Uh but uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know there's so much that they but need. You don't think that the Lakers can make it with just LeBron and Kyrie? Make it to what? Championship? No. Win the championship. No, that's not enough. You have to have Anthony Davis. Bro, that that them days of just LeBron and Kyrie. Nah, that's no. It's a different NBA. Yeah, it's a di- definitely a different it's NBA. A di- it's a different NBA. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, He's not even on the team. I don't even know who you're talking about. But nah, bro. Bron at this age and Kyrie at this stage, bro, not enough anymore to, to, yeah, to uh, come out on top. Yeah, also too, my last thing is uh I don't I don't think the Pat Bell move, like though it makes noise, they want a press conference or whatever. I don't know what type of friction that'll bring between him and Westbrook if they'll say let's just be professional. Get him to fucking leave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I don't think I don't I don't think having Pat Bev is like the end all be all to championship or to Me rewrite re- rewrite the wrongs of last year, despite AD obviously being hurt. Posing arguments on that, but we'll see what other moves are made in the off season. Uh, transition. So the LeBron, if LeBron gets injured, and it's just AD, can they win a championship? No, bro, no way. <laughs> oh, this team cannot win now. I don't know. He just can't. Yeah. Not good enough. That's the bottom line. No, and I like the Lakers. I'll be rooting yeah. for them, but they just ain't good yeah. enough. And maybe if the Lakers didn't win, if the Lakers didn't win in a bubble, I would see Braun playing with like this. Still got something to prove. I'm still trying to bring an NBA championship to the Los Angeles Lakers, but. I, I, I don't think LeBron will ever cheat the game. I do believe LeBron will give it 110% every time he steps in, in between the lines. But I personally believe LeBron's bigger picture is playing with his sons, and I think he's going to do whatever he needs to do to preserve his body to see that dream come to light. So the reason it's essential for AD to be healthy it's so LeBron doesn't have to carry the biggest workload that he's been carrying for the past 20 years. That's why you need AD to stay healthy. So LeBron can preserve his energy as he, you know, as, as you get into the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? LeBron don't need to, you know, play a full 82-game season and average 45 in the play. Like, that. Like no, AD, like, you're supposed to, like, carry this burden. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I don't I don't see Braun. I, I think the older as he's he, as he gets, he's gonna be play more wiser. I don't think LeBron gonna be out there trying to kill himself just to make the playoffs, and, you know, so to speak. Um, but yeah, moving on. Miley Perkins it. Miley Perkins it. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. A <laughs> Rod. Um, A Rod. Aaron Rodgers, not the. Other one. All right, not the other one. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers quarterback, back-to-back MVP of the NFL. Mm-mm-mm. And current roster spot holder on the <laughs> Shiners. <laughs> you did. Yeah, on the Joe Rogan podcast, Aaron Rodgers admitted that he has played on Percocet in a football game, more so doing it for pain management purposes uh, because, as he describes it, the NFL's – the way the NFL deals with injur- injuries is, quoting, ass backwards. Uh, Black Peace, A-Rod, on the purposes, playing football, he says this for pain management. 
how do you how do you respond to that? How does that make Darnell Black Peace feel? It, it's comical. It's comical, honestly, uh, because it's comical because if it was a athlete that would not be as accepted, it would be a lot more investigation, be a lot more racism. But back MVP, you know, Aaron Rodgers, it's it's looked at from a certain perspective in the light of Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Uh <laughs> 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 the shower is a a rod on the Perkinses. Is it a big deal? Um, a Ron Rogers on the Yurts, man. Uh, you know, I think he just he. I mean, he can be public with it, right? He's a he's a, a senior citizen in the NFL. He's ten years. He's got his stripes. He's paid his dues. Multiple time MVP winner, Super Bowl winner, champion winner, most talented quarterback to ever live. Um, I know Patrick Mahomes still writing his story, man, has something to say about that, but most polished elite passer skill and talent wise, again, excluding Patrick, because I, I got mad respect for Patrick. He got a chance to still be the great, the great one, but. You know, I don't think it's I don't think it's a big deal. I think if anything, it shines a bigger light on, you know, the NFL and their lack of um their lack of innovation within the area of pain management and, and injury management in regards to the players. Um if you got um a hundred fifty, two hundred million dollar man on your roster and he having to pop perks before games. Somewhere in my spirit at the very top, that don't sit right with me. Um, but I, I mean, I've heard worse. I've heard players playing on Trimadol, you know, mm -hmm. other, you know, uh, dramatic, you know, means of measurement in regards to, you know, pain management. So, yeah. Uh, talking about the Trimadol shot, I don't know if that's what it was, but when you just talk about how – Aaron Rodgers saying how the NFL deals with injured players is, you know, ass backwards. Tyrod Taylor, I know last year when he went out, I, he I, he was getting some type of shot, which I believe was because of an injury. And that that whoever that trainer was mismanaging or misusing the the needle, you know, in the wrong way, punctured his lung. Damn punctured his lung and he was out if I, I want to say for the rest of the season or a good portion of the season. Um but I mean just just showing an example of like the use and how they're dealing with injured players and I guess really not using advanced technology or an advanced method at all to try to help speed up injury or deal with injury uh, in a more delicate way for these players who they pay millions of dollars. But yeah, I just want to share that. Are the Percocets subscribed? They have uh, to be. Okay, well. I don't think he would come out and admit it if they, if they weren't because that would mean he's a... What? He's a... Don't uh, like that. Hey, what the what people say? I'm an addict and I can't even hurt him. <laughs> yeah, we can't we can't follow him. He can't if he can't get in trouble. If they ain't but I do know to him, if that was a black lost. player, if that was a black player, our uh, our Caucasian audience would have came out under the comments like the comment warriors that they are. I love my all my people. I'm very inclusive, but these are the facts. These are things that I'm seeing, so I'm calling something that I visually see, right? A lot of the times when when a, when a player not of color, a white player comes out and, you know, whether he says, you know, a dramatic statement, even Aaron Rodgers stands with the vaccine and how people came out to his aid in the defense. But yet, you know, Kyrie, he's outspoken. He doesn't want the vaccine, right? And the media, we kill him. He's, he's a team killer. He's this, he's that, but Aaron he's Rogers, selfish, you know. But and it's just it's so amazing to me, man. And 
I just can't help but think that, let's say Lamar Jackson came out and said, man, I, I played a game on purpose. No, do you know the whole, we, you're going to play games on Percocet. We're never buying your jerseys. Come on, man. You already the know what NFL happened. would implement a Come immediate on, rule the very next week. Come on. It's extent, and I don't, I didn't get a time, forgive me. I didn't get enough time to like look it up to see what is necessarily deemed on the, the band. Not all Lamar Jackson. He's the also band. lost the hold on the young child. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to check out what's on what's the up? NFL's drug policy ban like what's banned on their drug policy or whatever but but i, I personally feel the show of sentiments i feel like a black player black player in the nfl doesn't have that don't have the privilege to come out and just openly say yeah you know you know boys be on the first you know, i want to yeah um, you know I'm i want to say calvin johnson he admitted that way after he was retired like yo i have to smoke weed a lot before games to kind of deal with the pain and so on and so forth but out of the league and done with his career, right? But somebody currently in their career at the height or whatever the case may be, I don't, I don't think the NFL would be. They they would swear the player, the black player, was tainting the image of the the NFL. They would they were they were not representing the shield of the NFL appropriately. And, and the like, worst part, they, they, and the worst part, they have videos of him basically geeked out, and you have the the answer of. Taking what he's done, just done. You about to do it again? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, so you know what? We about to lay. <laughs> nah, right on, man. Um, as always, we don't take y'all listening for granted. We truly do appreciate it. We're gonna continue to stay consistent, giving y'all great content for people next week.